Hello everybody, this is Ian, founder of i30 Media Corp and the author of the Lean Media book, blog, and video channel, which you're looking at right now, available from leanmedia.org. Today I'm going to be talking about creating a purchase order within Shopify. This is a new feature. I'm going to try to go through it kind of fast because as you may see, my battery indicator, I only have 8% uh, juice left, and I'm probably going to run through it pretty quickly. A um, uh, quick disclaimer, you're responsible for following Shopify's terms and carefully evaluate risk before following any of the advice I'm about to show you, and your experience may be different than mine based on when you watch this video or how you have Shopify set up, for instance, if you have special apps or something like that, or Shopify changes the service, which it will probably do. So here's my Shopify store. I sell, I'm a publisher, I sell these uh, printed the cheat sheets and books that my company publishes, and uh, sometimes what I do is I need to create a purchase order with one of my vendors. Uh, in order to, first of all, let them know that I want to buy something from them, but also to let my inventory system know that I want to, uh, I'm going to be getting more products. And actually, if you go to uh, your Shopify store, click on products and then click on inventory, you'll come to this screen. Um, you'll see, you can kind of slice and dice it by uh, different locations where you keep inventory. And sometimes you'll see something like this. It'll say incoming 20, available one. So I'm about to run out of this particular book, uh, LinkedIn in 30 Minutes by author Angela Rose. So what I've done is I've set up a purchase order. It's actually with Amazon KDP to order 20 copies. And uh, Shopify knows that these will be coming in. And once the purchase order comes in, once the purchase order is complete, I can receive the items and then my inventory will automatically update. I actually ordered a whole bunch of items at once. I ordered these, uh, these four books all at once. Um, so once that box comes in, I can receive the inventory. So um, there's... Of course, if I wanted to, I wouldn't even need to set up the purchase order. I could just kind of kind of create the inventory uh, transfer on the fly using the transfer feature, which I also did in another video. But in this case, what I would like to do is set up a purchase order, um, which basically lets the system know that at some point in the, in the near future, or maybe you know a couple months down the road, I'll be getting in some more inventory, and it will show up in my, invent in my system that this stuff is coming down the line. So uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of purchase orders. I use it quite a bit. I'm going to create a purchase order. And there's a couple important items to note here. Uh, first of all, you have to select a supplier. So let's say that I'm ordering from uh, Red Spot Printing. Okay, select destination. I only have two destinations. I, interestingly, one of them is called Red Spot Inventory. Notice that's different than Red Spot Printing. And the reason is, is because uh, these are kind of separate entities in the system. Red Spot Inventory is just where the uh, Red Spot keeps its inventory. It's a it's actually a room downstairs on the in the basement of that particular facility. Uh, but Red Spot Printing is the company itself. So I differentiate between those. So when I order something from Red Spot Printing, the first thing I do is I actually set up the inventory, uh, the the uh, the product to be delivered to inventory, and from there I'll tell Red Spot to transfer to Amazon, or I'll arrange for a transfer where we'll pick it up. So reference number, you can put anything here. It's optional. Um, let's just say I'm going to say 100 Google uh, cheat sheets. Okay, and I'll put the date 01, 11, 21. I don't do payment terms. I don't do supplier currency. But of course, if you're dealing with overseas or uh, foreign suppliers, that may be an issue. The most important thing here is the product. So let's say uh, I said it's Google cheat sheet. So let's search for uh, Google. Oops. And here we go. Okay, so let's say I'm getting the Google Docs cheat sheet. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm showing you a little secret actually. This is how much they cost. <laughs> um, I'm going to get 100 of them. So I'll automatically calculate the cost of $75. Uh, note to supplier. You know, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, hold on here. Because I've already, I've already set up uh, Red Spot Printing in my, uh, my supplier details. It has like email address and mailing address. If I put a note there, will that automatically tell them that something's going on, that they're going to be getting an order? And actually, the answer is no, it's not. Um, and I, I actually asked Shopify about this. They said at the time, this was in 2020, that that feature had not been uh, fully implemented. So what I typically do is I use email uh, to send them the order. And then I'll copy and paste the email right into here so I can see what's going on. But I do keep that these items uh, up to date. Uh, the tax issue... This is really complicated. I'm not going to get into it here. It depends on where the other company's located, whether there's some sort of special tax um, uh, laws in your state or in your province or in your country handling it. Um, but you should be you should be cognizant of that. And also, this information here, the $75, that that is not tied into any of my accounting system, but it is a reference for me. And then what I'm going to do is save as draft. And you may be thinking, well. 
if they're not sending a note to the supplier and it's not integrated with your accounting system, then like, what's the point of even doing this? And here's the point of doing this. First of all, it will let me look into my inventory and then I shall see that a cheat sheet, a new cheat sheet is coming in. So it was a Google Docs cheat sheet. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Well, actually, I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, you know what happened? I actually, actually, I might have to save it or activate it. Yeah, it's draft. So let's quickly do that. I'm, I'm kind of sensitive because, oh yeah, mark is ordered. You have to do that. So in addition to saving it, you have to mark it, mark it as ordered. After marketing is ordered, you'll be able to receive incoming inventory from your supplier. This purchase order can't be turned into a draft again. That's fine with me. Okay, then uh, this is the big benefit. Let's go to inventory. So here's my cheat sheets in here. There it is right there. So these 100, it says 100 cheat sheets are incoming. So that shows up there. And then once I receive the inventory, once I receive that purchase order, and let's actually just show you how that's done. It's this one right here. I basically go in here, I click receive inventory, and then those 100 units will be added into the active inventory. For more information on how to get the most out of Shopify, go to leemedia.org. Uh, click on video, and then you can check out my YouTube channel, which has all kinds of um, videos about Shopify. Also, my blog on Lean Media has uh, blog posts about Shopify and also Amazon and all kinds of other services that I use. I try to help people out. If you enjoyed this video, if you think this was useful, please like it or subscribe to me. Um, and also just remember, the uh, way things work for you may be quite a bit different and you're responsible for evaluating risk before you do anything like this because it's possible to uh, do well on Shopify. It's also possible to lose money uh, using any sorts of online um, e-commerce services. My name is Elamont. Thank you so much for watching.